Cats v. United States, decided in 1967. What are the facts? The petitioner was convicted of transmitting betting information by telephone from Los Angeles to Miami and Boston, violating a federal statute. At trial, the government was permitted over the petitioner's objection to introduce evidence of the petitioner's telephone conversations, which was overheard by FBI agents who had attached an electronic listening and recording device to the outside of the public telephone booth from which he had placed his calls. In affirming his conviction, the Court of Appeals rejected the contention that the recording was obtained in violation of the Fourth Amendment because there was no physical entrance to the area occupied by cats. The Supreme Court then granted certiorari in order to consider the constitutional issues. So what was the legal issue? Whether the Fourth Amendment protects telephone conversations conducted in a telephone booth and secretly recorded to introduce as evidence against that same person. So what was the rule? The protection of the Fourth Amendment against unreasonable searches and seizures follows the person and not the place and extends to any area where a person has a reasonable expectation of privacy. From this case also comes Katz's two-pronged test, which reads, one, a person must exhibit an actual expectation of privacy, which is a subjective test, and two, the expectation must be one that society is prepared to recognize as reasonable, which is an objective test. The court went on to say, the petitioner has strongly argued that the booth was a constitutionally protected area. The government, on the other hand, has maintained that it was not. But this effort to decide whether or not a given area viewed in the abstract is constitutionally protected deflects attention from the problem presented in this case. The Fourth Amendment protects people, not places. What a person knowingly expresses to the public, even in his home or office, is not a subject of Fourth Amendment protection. But what he seeks to preserve as private even in an area accessible to the public, may be constitutionally protected. The government stresses the fact that the telephone booth from which the petitioner made his calls was constructed partly of glass, but what he sought to exclude when he entered the booth was not the intruding eye, it was the uninvited ear. He did not shed his right to do so simply because he made his calls from a place where he might be seen. We have expressly held that the Fourth Amendment governs not only the seizure of tangible items, but extends as well to the recording of oral statements overheard without any technical trespass under local property law. These considerations do not vanish when the search in question is transferred from a setting of a home, an office, or a hotel room to that of a telephone booth. Wherever a man may be, he is entitled to know that he will remain free from unreasonable searches and seizures. Speaking for the majority, Justice Stewart wrote, We conclude that the underpinnings of Olmstead have been so eroded, can no longer be controlling. The government's activities in electronically listening to and recording Kat's words violated the privacy upon which he justifiably relied while using the telephone booth and this constituted a search and seizure within the meaning of the Fourth Amendment. The fact that the electronic device employed to achieve that end did not happen to penetrate the wall of the booth can have no constitutional significance. If you liked the video, please subscribe.